What is up people, Dunna here, and today I've made a bit of a breakthrough and I'm very excited to share with you guys the secret that I found that's going to make dealing with S-Log so much easier. And it's super simple. But first, let me explain. About two years ago, I picked up the Sony a6500, upgrading from the Sony a6000. And I made a video about the 10 features that I was most excited about. One of those things was the fact that I was going to get access to the Sony picture profiles. Most notably, S-Log2, which increases your dynamic range a whole bunch when shooting video. Now, if you're not sure what that means, basically, if you're shooting a scene that has really bright brights, like this light back here, and really dark darks, like my shirt, then you're gonna be able to capture both of those and when we're capturing it it looks more like a reduction in contrast so everything kind of looks flat and gray and then when you're editing it you can pull all of that back but the important part is that it's capturing all of that information so you get to decide if you're going to push those blacks back down or if you're going to push those whites back up to being white but here's the issue when i got that a6500 and i started to shoot an s-log I just hated it so much. With the file sizes and file types that you're dealing with in the Sony cameras, I just found that it was really difficult to work with the S-Log2 footage. The idea of shooting an S-Log for me was actually so that I would have more control afterwards, but when I actually went to push the footage around where I wanted it to go, it just started to fall apart. So basically after a couple of weeks of trying it and trying a bunch of different things, I basically gave up on S-Log. But I was always interested in how I could try and make S-Log work. Let me show you a quick example of the problems that I've been having with S-Log2 footage. Okay, so we're looking at the plain S-Log version. It's super flat, it's super desaturated. Let's just crank up the saturation so we can see what's going on with the colors. So I'm gonna crank it up and then we're gonna zoom in here. We're gonna take a look right here. This is where I notice it the most for whatever reason. You see all this crazy blotchy, there's like pink and then green. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And even if I back off the saturation a little bit, you can still see it in there. So it's happening right off the bat. And I know my skin isn't perfect, but it's definitely not like that. Okay, so if we do that and then we go over to the clip that has my fix on it, right away it looks like a more consistent color. And then if we crank up the saturation, you can see that it's a nice even color. There's none of that kind of blotchiness that we saw in the other one. Now again, I can crank it up so that it's super oversaturated and you can tell that it's just nice and even. I'm looking a little crazy, but maybe a little too much spray tan there, Dunna. But even if I go back and you're looking at it not zoomed in, you can see this like splotchy kind of difference in color. It's almost like this isn't getting saturated. Like it's so desaturated to start with that there is no color to find in there. Now, maybe I'm missing something because I see other people using S-Log2 and they seem to enjoy it and seem to have no problem with it. But for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to work for me. So leave a comment down below if you think that I am just totally missing something. But the way that my brain works is that I wanted to fix it. So recently I had a little bit of time and I did some experiments and I managed to get this to look like this by changing a simple setting inside the camera. All right, so we're back in this corner. We've got basically that same shot set up again, as you can see. And if you're looking at the screen, you can see that I'm in S-Log2, so it's super flat, super desaturated. This is just the standard S-Log2. So I'm talking about no modifications whatsoever. We're just on picture profile seven, the one that comes in the camera. Now, there are a couple of ways that I've heard people talk about exposing S-Log2. There's exposing two stops over, those kinds of things. The two main ways that I've basically heard is that you wanna set your zebras up and you want to max out at 107. So anything that's going over 107 is going to be permanently clipped. So trying to keep everything under that, or you're going to set your subject, which if it's a human, the skin should be around 70 IRE. Now, personally, I like the 70 IRE, but we'll test both ways here. So I'm going to go into my zebras and I'm going to choose 70. And now you should be able to see that on the side of my face, there's a little bit of zebras going on. Now I've exposed it under a little bit, like I could make it so that the whole side of my face has the zebras going on, but then I'm blowing out the window pretty hard. So I'm gonna back that off just a little bit. We're gonna go down to the base ISO on the 6600 in S-Log, which is 500. Now we've got this shot. Let's now do it the other way where we're trying not to clip at all. So I'm gonna change 
my zebra level to lower limit of 107 so we can see what exactly is clipping. And then I'm gonna have to mess with my aperture to get it so that we're not clipping at all. That got rid of it. And let's try that for a couple of seconds. Okay, so we've got our standard S-Log footage, the stuff that I've been having trouble with forever. And now I'm gonna make that one little change that's gonna make it so much easier. But first, let me explain kind of why I came to this result. To my understanding, there are two main things happening when you go into S-Log. The contrast is being reduced so that it can capture more dynamic range and the saturation is being reduced significantly as well. Now, what I really wanna get out of S-Log 2 is an increased dynamic range. So that's really the catch. I do want it to reduce the contrast, but I don't necessarily need it to reduce the saturation. And the problem that I'm having in the end is the fact that on Sony with 8-bit and 420, I can't seem to push the colors around enough to get that back. I'm having that weird little blotchy problem. So within my picture profile, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna leave everything standard, except I'm gonna go down to saturation and I'm gonna bump it all the way to plus 32. Now, when you're in S-Log and S-Gamut, it's already so desaturated that when I push it all the way up to plus 32, it's still not as saturated as if you were just not using a picture profile altogether. But in my experience so far, because I don't have to push the saturation up so much when I go to color, grade the footage, I don't get nearly as much of that blotchiness and problems that I was having in the colors. Let's try it. On my function button here, then I'm going to go into my picture profile. I'm going to go over. This is hard to do backwards. I'm going to go down to my saturation and I'm going to crank it up all the way to 32. You can still see that we're very desaturated. We've lost a little bit of light, so I had to crank up the ISO just a little bit, but I've got that same zebra on the left-hand side where the light is coming in through the window, so we should be able to get about the same kind of result. So we'll try this one first. And then we'll try it the other way, where we go to 107, and we make sure that we're not clipping anywhere. Oops, wrong way. Okay, no clipping. I look very dark. All right, let's get this footage into the computer and we'll see if we can make this whole thing work again. All right, so we got fresh footage in here. These are the new ones that we just took. So this one here is the regular S-Log, the Picture Profile 7. This one is the modified one with the increased saturation. Let's see if we can replicate what we had before. So let's crank up the saturation. You can see we've got that same problem. A little bit of a different area this time, but same issue. We've got this like splotchy red color noise or something. And even up into my beard, you can see it all. My skin does not look like that. So with the fix applied, so this is the one with the uh, increased saturation in the camera. If we crank it up. There might still be a little bit of it happening, but you can tell that it's a lot less. And obviously this is, again, like super oversaturated. Now in regards to the other ones where we expose to attempt not to blow out the highlights in the window, uh, I'm finding that it's just way too dark on this side. It's, it's pretty much unsalvageable. I would much rather blow out the highlights in the window and make sure that my face is a little bit more exposed or you just add a light onto this side or some kind of a reflector or something like that so that you don't have this problem unless you're going for something super moody. But ignoring the exposure for now, if we do the same thing with the saturation, Crank it up there too, and then we zoom in. Even though it's a little darker, you can see on my face, we got all sorts of different kind of splotchiness. Now, if we go over to the other test shot, significantly underexposed, in my opinion, kind of unusable because you'd have to bring up all this noise and we saturate a whole bunch. That gross blotchy splotchiness is way, way less in this one than it was in the other one. Like if we match the kind of saturation level, you can see in my face, it's crazy. In this one, it's a lot more kind of even. So now if you wanna throw a LUT or something on that, you're gonna to have to make sure that before you do, you just dial back the saturation. This is just the Sony provided S-Log LUT, and it looks pretty good before, after. Now let's try and do that same thing to this one. 
And again, same LUT, we've got that gross kind of blotchiness. So if you have some LUTs or something for S-Log, they'll probably actually work better with this method, but you have to make sure that you dial back the saturation. So after all that time, I can finally confidently shoot in S-Log 2 and get all that dynamic range back. It's just nice to have as an option. I don't need it all the time, but it's just nice that it's there. And it makes a huge difference that I feel like I can actually color grade it now. Hopefully this helps some of you guys too to make your S-Log footage better. If you have any other tips or tricks that you think I should know about, make sure to leave them down in the comments section below. And on your way down there, hit the like and subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.